Antoinette is working on the top of her Hoosier cabinet that was painted when we bought it. And we painted it, the paint didn't stick well, and we didn't like it. And she's actually doing what she wanted to do originally, which is taking it down to just bare wood and then we will stain it or clear coat it or both. How's, how is the process going? Well, I'm strangely enjoying it. Um, and we put citrus strip, let me show you here, citrus strip paint and varnish stripper on it. Um, it's probably going to take about four or five coats of this stuff to get everything off. Um, I'm almost down to the last, what I believe is the last layer of paint on here. And then I'm probably going to use some steel wool on it to get the rest of this paint off. And then I don't know what I'm going to do next. All right, we'll check, <laughs> we'll check back in with you later. Okay, cool. This has had four layers of citrus strip sprayed on it. And I think on the um, this rolling door, I'm now down to the very last layer and I'm going to scrape this off. On the edges, it looks like I've got at least another layer of white paint to take off. But it's coming along. It is an absolute mess and a disaster, but eventually it's going to look pretty damn nice. So I'm just going to keep scraping. Um, I find this very cathartic, so I don't really mind doing it. <laughs> and as you can see, it's coming off pretty good there. And this last little bit, I'll take up with some steel wool. It's peeling off really well right now because we let it soak overnight and the citrus strip really, really did what it's supposed to. It saves, saves a lot of scraping if you let it soak for a while. Multiple applications of citrus strip. I could have gotten a stronger um, paint stripper, but it's winter time. We really can't ventilate the house. So the citrus strip is not nearly as noxious. So that's why I chose to do that. At this point, the Hoosier cabinet is starting to look like what it's going to look like when it's done. You can see a lot of this natural wood. It has a little bit of a reddish color to it. But especially like this piece right here looks really good. Antoinette's still hard at work. And it's still got a ways to go because she's going to get the paint off of the sides. You're doing the inside too? No, the doors. The, the sides and the doors, so. Three doors, the four doors that you have. <laughs> what I've got here is one of the many doors to my Hoosier cabinet. And if you come in a little closer, I'll show you what we're doing over here. So, this is just a piece of, it's just a cut up garbage bag. Um, and underneath, if, I don't know if you can, can they see it? Yep. Um, you can see the paint that's just real deep in these cracks here, and I, I really want to get that out. Um, so that's why I covered it in plastic to kind of keep it from drying out in here, and that should work on this paint. And then I'm going to use, I got a couple of tools here. I'm going to try a toothpick, um, a toothbrush, and a plastic scraper. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, and then, you know, all of my dreams will be complete if I can get the paint out of there. Did you find anything cool today? I did find something cool. No, it was not a bag of money. It was this strange little symbol here that at one point was painted on these doors. Cool. Yep. <clears throat> here are the doors for the Hoosier cabinet and the products that we used. Citrus strip from a bottle, which comes in very handy. A wood chisel that we used as a scraper, which is pretty helpful. We used uh, steel wool for sanding. Low odor mineral spirits to clean off things like the remaining little bits of citrus strip and paint. A Black & Decker orbital sander that comes in very handy. Some golden peach wood stain. One of my favorite products, polyurethane gloss, because if you put a few layers on this, it's very durable. You can even use it on the floor. Rub and Buff is the next product. That's R-U-B, the letter N, Buff. 
She loves it. I don't like it because there always seems to be a silver residue that is still on whatever you put it on that comes off onto your hands. She loves it. I don't like it. The flower sifter. She sprayed the outside of the flower sifter with a chrome spray paint from Rust-Oleum, and she actually does use the flower sifter. Stores flour in there. You take off a little cap. You crank the handle. It goes into whatever container you have below it. This is basically what the Hoosier cabinet is going to look like when it's done. She got most of that paint off of there and still has a little bit more work to do. Here is the sliding door that works. You kind of have to use two hands to open it, but it does work just fine. And then in those cracks between the slats to get that little bit of paint out, she used that scrubbing brush. And then this is a razor blade scraper, but the razor blade part that is changeable, you can switch that out, is plastic. So it does a lot of good scraping, but it's not going to damage things like a metal scraper would. When you order this, it comes with multiple orange blades. You can swap those out. These products are linked in the description below. Here is the finished Hoosier cabinet. Looking pretty good. Up here in the top left is your flour sifter. And guess what's in there? Flour. So you open up this bottom door, take off this little cap, crank this handle, and it, the flour comes out into your container sliding door. These doors open and shut. You have your junk drawer and your other drawers here. There's a pie cooling rack right here that slides out. And another drawer up top. And one more feature, this part slides out for extra working area. So there is the completed Hoosier cabinet.